One of the first things to consider, and it may seem obvious quite frankly, about whether you should buy a new GPU at this point is just how old is your existing hardware. If you're still rocking something like the 1080 or the 1080 Ti, two of the most popular GPUs in history, but you're playing on 1080p resolution, and maybe you're focusing on games like Valorant or CS, or, or maybe you're not playing so much CS these days, I get that too. I get it in that kind of situation. For tax shooters at 1080p resolution, a 1080, a 1080 Ti, something like that will probably give you all the frames you need for the foreseeable future. However, the thing about hardware as it gets older is oftentimes it's okay until, well, frankly, it's just not all of a sudden one day. And if you're somebody that likes to dabble in AAA titles or story games, things like that, your older hardware may not be able to keep up anymore. It's no secret that games are getting harder to play and and resolutions for a lot of people have been going up over the last couple years. So let's look at a couple of the other guidelines about is now a good time to buy. My second consideration would be, are the GPU and the CPU in your primary system balanced? Like a lot of people, I upgrade my CPU probably every two to four years, every couple of generations at the earliest. However, if you've upgraded your CPU, but not your GPU in recent memory, you're probably a little bit out of whack. So what I mean by that here is sometime over the last few years, you've upgraded to a relatively modern CPU, in this case, a 12900K. However, you've not upgraded your GPU to go along with it. So for this one, we're gonna use a GTX 970. Now, of course, we're gonna be doing graphically intense tasks, we're gonna be gaming, and for this one, let's say we're gonna be in 1080p. The results probably aren't really shocking just because of the age of the GTX 970, but you're really gonna be bottlenecked on the GPU side about how many frames you can effectively run in that configuration. For me, guidelines three and four really go together because it's gonna have a lot to do with resolution, the size of your screen and what kind of games you're playing. The third guideline I would use is how much compute power do you need? Obviously, when you go from 1080p to 1440 to 4K, you are having a massive jump in pixels every step along the way, and you need more compute power to drive all those pixels. If you're a hyper competitive tax shooter and you're gonna play in 1080p, 480 hertz, something like a 4070, the one that just got a nice markdown, would probably set you up for years to come. However, if you're gonna play in 1440 or 4K, you may wanna up the ante a little bit and realize that you just need more compute powers to make all those pixels dance when you ask them to. If I was gonna give 4K gaming a shot myself, I would think something like the RTX 4080 Super is probably about the least amount of graphics card that I would want in my system. Of course, another really good choice may be the RX 7900 XTX. And the nice thing about that is you're getting a little bit more VRAM on board. Point number four, ah, the VRAM. And do you need more as you go up in resolution? Well, you do, let's take a look. So aside from needing more compute power as you go up in resolution to drive all those pixels, it's often a good idea to have a bigger buffer. And remember, VRAM is the buffer on a GPU. It is what is holding all the information going in and out of the GPU so that you can feed the die and what's actually making the decision-making process to generate your frames. The harsh reality is, as you go from 1080p to 1440p, you definitely use a little bit more buffer size, and then you use a lot more buffer when you go from 1440p to 4K. Although you certainly need to have the information for more pixels as you go up in resolution, the real thing tends to be the textures. Remember, you are getting more detailed textures as you move up in resolution, and all that information has to be kept somewhere. My fifth point about buying a GPU is know your market. Now, I get it. I'm a huge GPU PC nerd in general, frankly speaking. You don't have to be a huge nerd like me, but just take a little bit of time and understand what's going on before you plunk down $1,000 or more for your new GPU. Although several years ago, it seemed the most impossible to buy a GPU, especially at a decent price. A lot of us upgraded to 2000 or 3000 series cards between 2020 and 2022. If you combine the fact that A, a lot of us have fairly recent GPUs in our machines, and B, Nvidia really hasn't been blowing us away with specs or certainly price to performance with the current generation. That means we circle back around to my point that it's frankly a buyer's market right now. I totally get it, not everybody has access to Micro Center, but if you're one of the lucky few who do, you could walk into the store right now in Ohio here and get this new RTX 4090 for $1,820. I get it, that's not MSRP, but as far as the ASUS tax goes, 
it's not that bad either. If you said, hey, GIF, you're off your rocker. There's no way I'm spending almost $2,000 for a graphics card. I would get it. If we wanted to come back into something a little bit more mainstream, you right now have cards like the 7900 XT available for $730. If you're one of us that's old enough that can remember spending anything more than five or 600 bucks for a mainstream graphics card was just ridiculous. The RTX 4070, the original 4070, has actually kind of fallen into being a not too bad deal at around 550 bucks. Having said all that, remember to keep in mind the hardware that you currently have and what resolution you wanna play in the future. Then the final thing is what does the market look like? As of right now, both CPUs and GPUs, at least here in North America where I am, are pretty readily available. The pricing is pretty decent also. As always guys, comments and questions are welcome down below. And until next time, GIF out.